Hello everyone, I'm here to give a solution for AND permutation. So the first step of the problem is to try to interpret the special input condition because it is a little bit unusual. So if I look at this equation uh, and look, think about what it means, this just means that x's bits are a subset of a sub i's bits. So in other words, x is a submask of ai. So Basically, what the input just says is like if a number appears in the input, all of its submasks will also be guaranteed to be appear in the input as well. So, how can we use our condi this condition to our advantage? So, this is kind of building towards the solution sketch, but um, imagine we build a try on the binary strings of all the input values, and then for a given node, we say zero is the left child and one is the right child. Then, for every node, all the terminal nodes in the right child subtree will have a corresponding partner in the left child subtree. Um, and you can think about how, why that's true, but it's just because like all the submask of the right child will appear in the left child as well. And in particular, that just also means like turning off the highest bit. And this is true for every node in the try. So for example, uh, if we look at the sample input, it's 0, 1, 4, 5, 2, 6. In binary, we write it down. And then this is a try we get. And you can see that, like for example, for like this node, every um, terminal node in the right child also appears in the left child. For example, for this node, every terminal node in the right child also appears in the left child. And this is true for everything. And for example, if we like added maybe 0, 0, uh, 0, 1, 1 for 3, like this is also still a valid input. If we remove 5, this is still a valid input. Um, but we can't remove, for example, like 4 because this still needs a corresponding partner. OK, so how do we take advantage of this fact in our actual solution? Uh, so the answer is just recursively solve um, each subtree. Uh, and then basically, the invariant we'll have is like, this solution will be valid if we ignore bits at this level and higher towards the root. Um, so for example, the base case, the leaf, uh, we can just assign the number to itself. And this is valid since we're just ignoring all bits at this stage because we reached uh, the, whole, the whole number. Uh, inductive step, um, if we're at a middle child with uh, like inner node with both the left and right child, we'll recursively find the solution for the left child and the right child. Now we know for every terminal node in the right child, it's guaranteed to also exist in the left child. Uh, left child. So we can just swap the two values assigned to those two nodes. And then this is guaranteed to not have any collisions just uh, by our inductive hypothesis. So the matching is already guaranteed to not have any collisions at that bit or lower. So the only bit we really care about is at that particular level. And this is also guaranteed to not match because we're swapping, uh, like we're matching ones and zeros. So uh, there won't be like two ones that are matched to each other. Um, and yeah, this uh, basically gives a solution. The run running time of this is n times log max of eight. Um, so that's one way to solve the problem. There is actually another way to solve the problem too. Um, so another way to do it is you can do it greedily. So you can sort the values and then iterate the values from greatest to least. And then for each value, you greedily match it to the greatest element that still satisfies the condition of the problem and is still in the match. Um, and yeah, this just works directly if you try it out. Um, and the rough proof stretch is very similar to using the try, but like you can imagine one phase is like you assign all numbers with bit k, uh, like all pairs, uh, as one phase. And then you show that after each phase, the invariant from your problem is still true so that you can keep doing this over and over again. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's not enough time to go into details. That's just a rough sketch. If you want to look into it more, um, that's one, one thing you can do. Um, and one thing is with the, with this greedy solution, it might be a little bit too slow if you just do it naively because the bounds are a little bit big. So you would need to speed it up. Um, so if you do want to look at a judge solution where, um, well, like what the speed ups are, we do have an example. So you can look at that in your own time later. Um, yeah, so that covers two different solutions for and permutation. Um, thanks for listening.